What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Brandon. Did you just pick yourself up a wire feed, MIG, or flex core welder and the results aren't quite what you're hoping for? Well, stick around. I've got five tips to help you solve some of those issues. So maybe you just picked up a flex core welder or a MIG welder and you get it home and you get it all set up and it's not quite performing the way you'd hoped. And it's not quite performing the way you've watched other people use that same machine on the internet or on YouTube. Well, I'm here to show you the best ways to set up your machine and avoid a lot of those headaches. So if you're experiencing some problems, watch this video. I think it'll be beneficial. Let's get into this. So number one, guys, I would say probably the number one issue that people experience when they're setting up their welder for the first time and it's not running right is that they're not using the right polarity for the wire that they're using. So it doesn't matter guys whether you have the big reel or the small reel a lot of these principles that I'm going to talk about in setting this up all apply to the same. Now if you're using flux cool wire you need to be on DC electronegative. Now all machines are different. Some have taps like this one. Some have actual wires that you physically need to switch around like on my Hobart which I'll show you here in a minute. But if you're using flux cool wire you want to be making sure that you're running DC electronegative. So this would go into the negative terminal right there. Then your ground or your earth would go into positive. So that is for flux coil wire, DC electronegative. If you're running bare wire, you know, with gas, you're going to be DC electrode positive. So again, that goes into positive. Now your earth goes into negative. And you can see on my Hobart here that it actually has physical connections that you need to take apart and dismantle. And it's got a little thing on the door showing you DC electrode negative for flux coil wire, DC electrode positive for solid wire. All machines are a little different. Some will have a selector knob on the front. The next big issue that I hear all the time, wire selection. And I know that doesn't seem like it probably would matter or make a difference. I'm telling you guys, it does. All wires will run a little bit different. I've tested a bunch and I'll put a link up above. It's that important. It's got a lot of views. This was my everyday wire. I use this every day for years. And after I did that test, I actually switched from using my supply house welding wire over to something different. The next tip I've got is getting this reel of wire or even a small reel of wire, but especially a new reel of wire, onto the machine and all machines feed the wire on a little differently. You can see that in this machine it feeds from the top. You can see that the drive roll system for this one is at the bottom. So the first thing you're going to want to do is prep your wire accordingly while it's on the reel. So let's simulate that this is a new reel. It'll be stabbed through the case like this. If it doesn't unreel, well the wire, because it's feeding off the bottom, would go on to the reel like that. Well, now I can't get to it. So prep the wire beforehand before you get it on the machine because you don't want all this wire coming off inside the cabinet as you're trying to get this all together. It still happens to me occasionally. It's a pain. It's a hassle to get it back on the reel. So this is one step you can do that will save you a little bit of hassle. So if your wire is coming through the back and you know you need to be able to grab it from the front, just switch it around. Take it from the back of the reel, stick it through to the front of the reel. That way your wire can't come off this reel and make a huge mess. Now you can put this on to the spool and you can still trim it and grab it when you need to. Now the next thing we're going to do, super important, you got to set the tension on this reel, then you're gonna to have to set the tension on your drive rolls. The first thing we're gonna do is talk about the reel tension. It matters. This, this overall affects the smoothness that your wire comes out the end of the MIG gun. If you get this wrong, you're gonna get stubbing, you're gonna get sputtering, you're gonna get irregular welds. So it's really worth it to take your time right now and set these up the right way. Then if you're running into problems down the road, you know it's not anything you didn't hear because you've already done this right. It could be your metal, it could be your prep, it could be your ground, whatnot. So the goal here, guys, is we want this wire to come off the reel easily, but when you let off the MIG gun trigger, you don't want this reel to keep spinning because what will happen is if it spins a little bit extra as it's coming off the reel, it's gonna come unwound off this. It's gonna create a huge bird nest inside this cabinet going to be a huge problem. You can see we've still left the wire connected to the reel right now so it can't come off while we're still doing all these adjustments but if I spin this reel 
See how it keeps going? We don't want that. We need to tighten this down a little bit. But you don't want it so tight that it, that this machine's drive rolls, which is right here, and that's what feeds the wire, you don't want this reel so tight that these drive rolls are struggling and slipping to pull this wire through because now you'll even have more problems. What will happen is that your wire will start stubbing, it will start chattering, you won't get consistent feed on your wire. It just causes all kinds of problems. So it's really important that we get these steps right here, these two set up really well because these really affect how well your machine welds. So again, you can see this keeps spinning. That's way too loose. We need to add some tension to this. That's getting better. It still spins a little bit though. Add a little bit more. That's a good tension, guys. You see I turn it a little bit? I'm grabbing onto it. It goes a little bit. It spins a little, but not very much. You can see it slows down pretty quick. It doesn't keep spinning around. That's going to keep the wire from coming off the reel. Now, the next thing we want, guys, is we want to use the correct drive rolls for the application. So smooth drive rolls are going to be for solid wire. The serrated ones that have like the little teeth in them, that's for flux core. The reason for that is because the core of the wire is hollow, you need less tension on it so it doesn't crush the inside core. If you try to run flux core in these smooth grooves, you'll have to put so much tension on it that it's actually going to distort the wire and it's going to give you feeding problems. So make sure you're using the right drive roll for the wire. Again, serrated are for flux core smooth or for solid wire. We know that for our example, we're using flux core. We're gonna put on the flux core serrated drive rolls. So now we've got our little tension set right. Now we can start feeding the wire into the machine. And it's important to do this before you take your wire off because that's what's gonna keep this from making a huge mess. So you can see now I just grabbed the wire. I just pulled it off and you wanna trim it. Even with solid wire, trim it. Get this bend that's already in the wire out of there. Get it back to some nice smooth wire. I hold the wire with my right hand and I actually have my hand on the reel with my left and I just manipulate the reel just a little bit as I guide the wire in. That easy. The easiest way to get the wire down the MIG gun is to remove your nozzle and the contact tip and then stretch out your lead as straight as possible to get the wire fed down through. Now you just put everything back together again. Screw your contact tip on. Put a little tension on there, not a lot, but just a little. And that's what this is for on your pliers. That's going to make sure you have a good connection. Then screw on your nozzle. Trim your wire flush. Now that we've selected the proper polarity, DC electrode positive for solid wire, DC electrode negative for flux core, we've selected the proper wire, which would be the wire that you choose to purchase. I like 030 because you can use it all the way from down to sheet metal all the way up to quarter inch, and that covers pretty much everything that I do here in the workshop. Then we've set the real tension. Then we selected the proper drive rolls for the application. Now we got to set the tension on our drive rolls because the way this works is that you've got a drive motor that pushes this wire between two rollers. You can see there's a roller there and it just pushes it between the two. Too much tension, you're going to crush the wire, you're going to wear out the motor unnecessarily, you're going to distort the wire not enough tension, you're going to get slipping and you're not going to get a smooth, stable arc on the other end of your MIG gun. I'm going to show you right now how to set that up properly. Grab yourself a block of wood and set it onto your workbench, your work table. I want you to watch this reel right here because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pulling the trigger. I'm going to make a little bit of wire come out right there. You see that? So I've got about an inch of wire sticking out of it. I'm going to hold the MIG gun at about a 45 degree angle and watch what happens. The wire stopped moving. So that means that the drive rolls are slipping because I'm still pulling the trigger. I put a mark on the drive reel right here, guys, so you can follow that. But watch what happens. The drive reel is spinning and the wire reel is not. See how the drive reel keeps spinning? The wire reel is not feeding any wire. So there's not enough tension on the mechanism 
to force the wire through. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn that knob right there a half a turn until we get this dialed in perfectly. Then we'll go back to our block again. There we go. Look at that. That's what we want, guys. That's perfect. Let me do that one more time. And here's a great way to test this, guys, if you've got this just right. So pull out a little more wire, grab this with a gloved finger as hard as you can, and I can just barely stop it. See the reel? Look at the reel in the background. I can just barely stop it. It's taking a lot of pressure. I got a lot of pressure on this now, but it's still feeding through. See the wire come through? But I can stop it if I need to right there, but it's hard. It's hard to stop it. So now this is properly adjusted. Now what I would do is I'd write down that number so that I would know that that's the setting I need for this flex coil wire. Now why wouldn't I just crank this down? The issue with that is you get sometimes what's called burn back, meaning that you're welding your piece and the wire actually burns back and fuses to the contact tip. It'll fuse right to that. Now. That's the issue. If you're still welding and you've got your finger on the trigger and it fuses here and you've got this wound right down tight, these drive rolls will continue to pull wire off. Then it will start, because it can't push it down into the liner, it'll start just basically feeding it into the cabinet. And you'll get this huge nasty bird's mess. It makes a huge mess. So that's why it's important that you set the proper reel tension first. You set your drive roll tension you have a little bit of slip built in it so that if you do have a little bit of a problem that it's not gonna create a bird's nest inside your cabinet. It's not hard to clear, it just takes time. And the last thing you wanna do when you're in the middle of a welding project is get all this wire back out of the liner, pull it all back, get everything all taken apart and then start over again. It's just no fun. Now with those five tips guys, you should be set up for success. Now I have a lot of videos in a playlist titled beginner welding playlist and I'll put a link up above that'll take you into the next step of all of this stuff but the first step is making sure that the machine is set up right so that you can focus on technique being comfortable in setting up the machine now I know I told you I was going to give you five tips I'm going to give you a bonus I'm going to give you one more so the next key is you're going to be welding that's what you're going to work on next so you need the right settings so a real handy chart uh, especially for those starting out is Google Miller welds calculator and that'll bring you to this right here and then you can pick which process stick tig mig so solid wire mig flux coil wires and click on one of the processes that you want to know about or what to set up it's going to ask you what are you welding we'll say just some steel and let's say we're doing some 22 gauge your wire size is 30 thousandths it's going to tell you what to run for gas flow and it's going to tell you what to run for amperage 40 to 45 amps gives you some tips and it's just all around a great resource. This will get you real close to the ballpark so that you are set up for success. I know it can be confusing when you've got a brand new welder and you're trying to set everything up and get everything going and you just want to do it like now without reading all kinds of books and all kinds of stuff. So maybe that's what brought you to this video that you've run into some problems and now you're trying to figure out how to correct it. So hopefully I've shed some light on some of these really common problems and these are the most common setup issues when you purchase a brand new welder. And to build off this, go check out that play series up above. It's beginner welding series. There's tons of videos with tons of tips and all kinds of build videos, just lots of jam-packed information in there, which will make you a better welder. New videos every Friday. Please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Share it up. Until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care. Be safe. Bye.